Hey, it's Paul with Toolmetrics, and today in the shop I've got a CO2 laser, a brand new product from Laguna, and this is model PL1220. The 12 inches indicates the depth capacity, the 20 inch uh, it indicates the width capacity. That's a little misleading because you can actually do a lot more with it than that because the bottom is open on this machine, so you can slide work through and burn images in stages, and I've done that, and I'll show you an example of that later. The machine is also light enough to pick up and carry it to the work and set it in place and burn in a larger project uh, multiple stage images and get the effect that you want by just moving the machine around. Really neat concept. So where I see a product like this fitting in is with the maker movement really just continuing to take hold and grow. Uh, you have a lot of people making cool projects for friends to give as gifts or family members. And you also have a lot of people now making either side income or doing this as their main job. The key in that kind of an operation is personalization and differentiation. That's what I'm seeing more and more in this maker movement is taking it that one step further and customizing it for the customer. There's really no better way to do that than with a laser engraver. Um, another really cool thing about a machine like this is that it not only has the ability to engrave in any number of different materials, but it also, in certain materials, like wood, has the ability to cut as well by just increasing the power and slowing down the laser movement. So that's going to give you all kinds of you know, automation that you can bring to your operation. So for instance, I put in, uh, I programmed up a, a set of coasters and was able to put the uh, wood in place, hit a single button, and watch the image being engraved, and then the um, the pattern being cut with the laser. So you could literally program it into to produce a dozen coasters uh, in one pass, put your material in place, hit a single button, go grab a sandwich, cup of coffee, and come back a little while later and you're gonna have 12 coasters sitting waiting for just a light sanding, a coat of finish, and then off to your customer. So the possibilities are really endless with this machine. Another cool thing is that it can store all of your jobs on onboard memory. So later, if you ever wanna reproduce a particular project and go up to the panel, recall that file and, and hit go and it'll produce another copy that will be 100% digitally identical to the first one that you made. And it's uh, just that kind of repeatability brings a whole wealth of possibilities to your operation. So what I want to cover off on this quick first video is really just talk about what the machine is, how it works, and then talk about some of the materials that I've worked with in the first couple weeks with the tool. Uh, to give you a sense of what some of the possibilities are and help you make sense and, and maybe get an understanding of how it might fit into your operation. All right, first, how it works, uh, you're going to create the design that you want on your computer and then transfer it to the laser either over a wire or using a USB memory stick. Then the PL1220 uses a high quality 40 watt glass laser to generate a concentrated light beam that is directed to the surface of the project by a couple of mirrors, where it then evaporates material leaving a recess on the surface. The depth of that recess is controlled by two variables, power level and speed. Power level is measured by what percentage of that 40 watt laser is utilized for that particular cut. And speed is a measurement of how fast that laser head is moving as it renders an image. It's really important to note that when you're buying a CO2 laser engraver, you can't just buy that unit and then go home and start engraving. There are a number of other components that need to be carefully selected to match the capacity and capabilities of the laser system that you've chosen to make sure that you have a safe working environment uh, and that you can have maximum longevity out of the machine. So what I like about this product from Laguna is that they have bundled all the components that you need to make sure that uh, your, your product is going to work uh, appropriately for a long time and that you're going to have a safe working environment. So I'd like to take a look at each of those components so that you understand what all is included with the system. First of all, you never want to operate a laser without a system to keep it cool. Otherwise, the heat generated by the laser will wear it out quickly. The chiller that comes with the PL1220 circulates distilled water through the laser constantly, keeping it at a safe operating temperature, even during continuous operation. As the water passes through the laser, it absorbs the heat from the laser and carries it back to the chiller where it is actively cooled to a safe operating temperature before sending it through the laser again. This works way better than a water pump that simply circulates water and doesn't cool it off at all. 
You can expect much better longevity from your laser if you use a proper chilling device like this one included with the system. The laser produces a lot of heat, smoke, and fumes right at the surface of the project, so it's important to clear this away from the laser to prevent flare-ups and maintain a clean cutting surface for high quality engraving. An air pump is configured as part of the system to deliver a constant air stream right at the work surface. The component is essentially a high quality, compact air compressor that's purpose built for this application. Because you are actually evaporating material at the surface, laser engraving produces a lot of fumes, so you need a system to extract those fumes and get them outside or into a filtration system immediately. The PL1220 comes with a powerful exhaust extractor that pulls fumes quickly out of the laser chamber where they can be routed outside using the ducting that is provided. The component is absolutely critical in maintaining a healthy work environment and the system that is included here was able to keep up with the fumes generated on even the heaviest burning operations. Another really important component to the overall system is the software that is used to create images that will be cut or engraved. The system comes with RD Works, which is a feature-rich application that is custom designed for use with a laser engraver, lets you lay out your artwork and control the parameters of the engraver. You can import a variety of file formats for easy setup, including both vector and raster file types. And for simple designs, you can actually do all the work right there in RD Works itself. I found the learning curve for RD Works to be reasonably quick. Uh, using the video tutorials I found on the Laguna website, I was able to get up and running with enough knowledge to create pretty much whatever I wanted within a, just a few hours. There is a learning curve, but if you're savvy with other graphics applications, you shouldn't have a problem learning the basics of RD Works. My favorite feature of RD Works is the simulation mode, where you can actually see the exact path that the laser will take during the run job and the exact time that it will take to run that particular job. That allows you to go in and tweak the parameters or the design itself to measure the overall effects on runtime in case you want to do some optimization. All right, as I mentioned, the 1220 can burn images into a lot of different materials. I'm going to just walk through a few of the materials that I worked with over the last couple of weeks uh, to give you a, kind of a flavor and a sampling of what it can do. Uh, the only thing that I ran into that I was not, not able to etch directly into was metal. I tried uh, aluminum and steel and copper and wasn't able to uh, really come up with much of an image in any of those. So as I understand it, I've done a little bit of research now. There's a a process where you can put a coating over the top of those and then etch. And I'm going to do another video. Uh, I've got a couple products that I'm looking at. I'm going to do another video on that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I'm just going to walk through what I did have success with, and that was a lot of different materials. First of all, wood. Did a lot of different projects in wood. This is an example of some engraving that I did. Uh, and you can see the, um, the lettering on this goes in uh, nearly an eighth of an inch. So a really cool depth effect that I was going for and was able to achieve great results. I was very pleased with that. Uh, also in wood, I uh, did a couple of uh, different coasters. This is a luggage tag uh, and was able to, you know, both etch and cut uh, very effectively on that. Gives you the nice uh, blackened rim around the perimeter from the laser cutting, which I just think is really a cool look. Um, I mentioned I didn't, wasn't able to etch into metal, non-coated metal, but coated metal worked great. This is anodized aluminum. Uh, this is a, the Walter White figure from Breaking Bad. And I was really pleased with the crispness that I was able to achieve on very low laser settings. And I'll share the laser settings that I used after a lot of trial and error so that you can have that as a starting point. Here's the same image uh, engraved into melamine. And I was blown away. This was probably my my biggest surprise in the laser engraving process was how well I was able to engrave on melamine with that. The, uh, the crispness was, was quite impressive to me. Uh, this is a, a plate that I bought at a, uh, an inexpensive, uh, at, a, at a grocery store actually. Uh, I believe that it's um, ceramic uh, and was able to etch into that uh, with some text and graphics and was very pleased with the results there as well. Uh, I grabbed one of the drinking glasses out of our cupboard, uh, actually a couple of them, and burned my father's logo uh, onto that, uh, onto those, and was really impressed with the, uh, with the ability to get a very professional quality image on that. 
uh, in with uh, just a little bit of try and, trial and error. And again, I'll give you the settings for that. Uh, leather, I burned into a couple different pieces of leather. Uh, this is a leather shop smock. Uh, suede leather, so it's a little bit fuzzy, um, but it's still, still pretty cool and good results. Uh, at Again, very low laser settings uh, in order to be able to do that. Um, and then uh, finally, I talked about the uh, ability to do larger format projects on the, on the 1220. Now this is a three foot long sign that I was able to uh, engrave. And I was able to just do that in two stages. I burned tool and the logo first and then metrics and was able to just use some alignment aids to get that to come out how I like. And I was thrilled with the results of that. So you could do more stages than that and come up with a really long sign. Or as I mentioned, take the tool to the work pick up the laser, bring it over to your project, a large format project, set it in place, burn, move, and burn again. So lots of flexibility in what you're able to do uh, in terms of materials and capacity uh, with this unit. All right, that about wraps up my look at the PL1220. Uh, before I go, I wanted to leave you with some of these uh, engraver settings that I found, and this is through some trial and error. Uh, there may be better settings. I'd like to hear from you uh, if you have suggestions in terms of better settings for particular materials. I will probably mainly use this for wood, but I'd like to hear uh, how you would be using this uh, in your shop as well. I mentioned I'm also going to do a, a video on coated metals when I get the products in here and have a chance to play with those a little bit. So, so subscribe to the channel uh, and watch for those. Uh, and then just kind of in conclusion, my impressions were I was you know, it exceeded my expectations in terms of what a uh, inexpensive laser engraver system like this is capable of doing. Uh, I really like the quality of all of the components, the capabilities, the capacity, and so forth. And I really like the integration of all of the components, uh, all very good quality components coming together to make a turnkey system so that you don't have to go out and do the research for each and every one of those. And then you're not on the hook for choosing the right components to balance the system out. Everything is there and it does what you expect it to do. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you like the video, please click like uh, and please subscribe to the Toolmetrics channel for more woodworking and DIY videos coming your way.